Welcome to day 24 of the 25 apps in 25 days series, the daily series where I show off a brand new app every single day for 25 days in a row. And can you believe that somehow, some way, we are at our second last day of the series? I honestly can't quite fathom that it's nearly over. If you missed any of the previous episodes, I've linked a playlist down below where you can catch up. But for today's penultimate episode, we're actually kind of going back to where the series started by showcasing another third-party home screen launcher. But this is one that's way newer on the scene and it's been causing a heck of a lot of buzz in the customization world. As always, just a reminder that this video and this series does not have any sponsors, but it is supported by those of you who download and use any of my apps, as well as those who purchase any of the digital products that I sell on my website, all of which will be linked below. And as always, I do wanna quickly highlight the companion app to this series, my app shelf, which is a library of hand-picked app recommendations from yours truly. As I always say, we literally add brand new app recommendations to the app every single day, so it's definitely worth checking out. But with that being said, let's dive into day 24's application. All right, so if you haven't figured it out yet, then the launcher that we're showcasing in this second to last episode is none other than Octopi Launcher. And I've said a few times this year that I was planning on doing a full video on this launcher before the end of the year, so I'm finally making good on that promise. So when you first launch the app, you'll get this little welcome screen. So I'll tap, let's go. Then we'll get a change log. So I'll tap okay on that too. And then this is what the launcher looks like straight out of the box. And I've got to be honest with you, the default layout and configuration is certainly not what I'd call super visually appealing. In fact, it's probably what put me off from properly testing it for so long. But thankfully with a little trial and error, we can make it look almost exactly how we want it to. So I'll start by tapping customize, and then I'm basically gonna walk you through how I would set it up for my favorite home screen configuration. Now, I'm not expecting you to copy my settings exactly, but showing you this process will hopefully give you the skills and know how you need to then create your own home screen setups as necessary. So I'll first increase this icons across home screen slider to seven, then I'll disable this home screen labels toggle, then I'll set the horizontal padding to 50, and the vertical padding to 30. And with that done, I'll finally tap here to disable the dock. Then I'll tap looks good. And now we get a little prompt showing us the default gestures. So I'll just tap to close that. And now we've got completely empty home screen ready to customize. So I'm gonna long press anywhere to bring up this first settings dialog from which I can add blank pages if I want, like so. I can also tap to edit the pages, which is pretty nice. So let's go ahead and delete that second one. And then I'll come back and long press again. And I can also tap to add any widgets from this menu here as well. Or if I come back and long press again, I can also use this menu to add an app shortcut. And there's also the option to switch the screen's orientation or lock the layout change the wallpaper, so all the basics that you get on most customizable third-party launches. But if we then tap on launcher settings, here's where we get all the fun stuff. Firstly, I'm gonna come over to this theme page and toggle this setting so that the launcher follows my phone system theme. And with that done, let's come back to our home page. Now, I'm not gonna walk you through every single setting here because a lot of it explains itself, but I'll start by tapping this home screen icon and folder appearance option. And I'm firstly gonna increase this home screen icon scale setting here to 100%. Then I'm gonna turn on notification badges and your phone may get you to then grant the app notification access. So grant that if it prompts you, but then I'm gonna leave everything else as is. I'll come back, then tap on customize gestures. And one pretty prominent feature that the app is missing right now is an option to install any sort of Google Now Feed plugin. So what I like to do is open this swipe right from first screen gesture, then come to the apps page and search for and select the Google app, then tap on Google. And I find this is a pretty solid workaround for the time being. Would love to get proper Google feed support in the future though. Then I'll long press again and tap on launcher settings and come back. Then I'm gonna skip the dock section cause I've got it disabled. And so next we've got our app drawer customizations. And first things first, let's take a look at the default app drawer setup. And look, I've got to admit, I'm not the biggest fan of how this looks straight out of the box, but we can make some tweaks to get it much closer to how it looks on other launches. So we'll come back and long press, then tap on launcher settings again. And I'm first gonna disable this show app sorting and menu bar. Then I'll come down and set this A to Z index bar position to off. Then I like to change this search button style to button left, but I have asked the developer to implement a dedicated search bar rather than having to tap a button every time. So hopefully that gets added soon. Then I like to enable this show hidden apps in search toggle. And I'm also gonna set the draw background opacity to 20%. Then I'm gonna change the draw items per row to four. Then I'm gonna lower the draw icon label scale slider to 80%. And then I'll come down and disable this draw icon label backgrounds option. 
Then the last thing I like to change is this draw folder style. So I'm gonna switch this from normal to grid. And there we go, when we come back and now swipe into our app drawer, I mean, that is way cleaner than before, right? I just think the font is a little dated looking, so I wish we had the option to customize the font ourselves. And I also wish that the text color could be set to white instead of black, which again, I think would look way cleaner. Oh, and if we could customize the horizontal padding, then we'd be in serious business. I basically just wanna make it look exactly like this app drawer that I created using Smart Launcher, which to me is the gold standard right now. Plus, if they added a built-in search bar instead of this search button, then that'd be the cherry on top. Anyhow, let's come out of that and long press, then again, tap on launcher settings, and let's now come over to the theme section. From here, I'm gonna tap on apply icon pack, and unfortunately, at the time of making this video, Octopi Launcher does not support icon pack masking, which is a sorely missed feature. So instead, I'm actually gonna use the custom icon pack that I created on day two of this series using the app Alembicons, which is this one here called Alchemy Con Pack. So I'll tap that to select it. Then I'm gonna long press and tap on launcher settings, which by the way, I wish the settings panel wouldn't close every time I made a significant change like that. But then the last setting that we're gonna tweak is under this general page, where I'm gonna disable this extra haptics effects toggle because leaving this on kind of freaks me out. But then from there, we can come home, then swipe into our app drawer and start bringing all the apps that I want to my home screen. And I'm gonna speed this up so that you don't have to watch it in detail. But once complete, my home screen layout is about 95% complete. The only other thing to do is to create that weather widget, which I've shown how to do in so many of my videos now. So I'm not gonna make you watch me do it again. So through the magic of editing, boom, there it is. And that is my home screen setup fully complete. And here's my favorite bit. The app opening and closing animations have this really fluid and bouncy vibe to them, which I love. One other thing to mention is that if we long press and tap on launcher settings, while we're still on this general page, the launcher does actually support creating and restoring backup files. But at the time of making this video, they only apparently work when you're restoring them on the same device that you backed them up on. So there is definitely room for improvement in that area. Actually, there is one other feature that I forgot to mention, which is that if we open up the settings again and come down a bit here and tap on this set Octopi launcher wallpaper option, then select the wallpaper that we wanna use via this menu. If we now long press and tap to add a widget to our home screen, so let's just add this Google Calendar one, for example, we can now long press that widget and there's now this new customized appearance option and we can select between the default option and these two new options, frosted and glass. Frosted kind of just adds a frosted border to the widget, which looks decent in and of itself. But if you select the glass option, depending on the widget, it'll actually convert the widget into this beautiful liquid glass style design, which honestly looks amazing. And just like the real thing, it even warps and bends at the edges, just like how it does on iOS 26. So big hats off to the developer for implementing such a feature. But that's really all of the main features. And as you can see, there's definitely still some room for improvement, like there's the missing built-in Google feed, the lack of custom font support, the design of the app drawer is still pretty rough in my opinion, and the backup and restore feature also needs fixing. Plus I'd love it if they could implement a wallpaper scale animation for the app opening and closing animations, because that would just be the cherry on top. But here's the thing, the launcher is still very young in its development cycle, and if past experience is anything to go by, then I reckon most of these features and fixes could get sorted out within the next few months anyway. And in fact, some of them might even be available by the time this video goes live. But there you have it, that is Octopi Launcher. And while Smart Launcher is definitely still my current preferred launcher of choice, Octopi is not far behind and it could very well overtake it within the next year or so. As always, don't forget to check out my app shelf for even more great app recommendations. And don't forget to hit subscribe so that you don't miss out on the final episode going live tomorrow. But aside from that, that's it. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you later.